Welcome into the In the Buddy podcast for KeenelandSelect.com for Saturday, September 16th. I'm Tom Leach, along with Jim Goodman, Keeneland's Director of Mutuals and Simulcasting, as we take a look at the big day up at Woodbine in Canada, a couple of grade ones, and we'll start in the 10th race with their grade one northern dancer turf at a mile and a half. Who'd you like in here? Well, you got to like Hawkbill, but uh, I, I saw just recently that they, uh, they put three to five morning line, and the horse hasn't run in North America. Um, but, you know, he obviously uh, was grade one placed in Germany and, and grade one, uh, he's running grade ones in Great Britain and in France. So you've got to look at him as the class of the race. And normally the uh, Europeans do very well here. But I'm going to use a couple others here. I, I like a horse named Messi for Graham Motion, the four horse. Comes out of a, a race at Saratoga that looks like was just a prep race for this. Uh, he, he didn't run that well in the United Nations, the grade one at Monmouth. And they brought him back in two and a half weeks, and he almost won an $80,000 claimer, optional claimer, but um, McTosser and Infinite Wisdom ran ahead of him, so there's, those horses came back and won. So I think Messi's coming into this race in really good shape. He may not be good enough to beat Hawkbill, but I, I'm going to give him a shot. And then the other horse that I would use uh, is Noble Thought, uh, second in the Sky Classic, uh, grade two, and should like to stretch out to a mile and a half. So Noble Thought is the three horse for Malcolm Pierce, and uh, I like the progression of a mile race at Woodbine and then a mile and three-eighths and then stretching out to a mile and a half. He was coming at the end of the Sky Classic and uh, just got beat by a length and a quarter. So I think he's got a shot at five to one. I don't think the three to five shot is a slam dunk here, but Houghton Bill is going to be the uh, a lot of people's uh, single in the pick fours. Yeah, I'm kind of see it the same way you do. Uh, Hawk Bill is the one that I uh, picked for the win pick um, off that grade two. <laughs> Uh, winning form in Europe, and then eight wins and 17 starts. I think it's also impressive. One other horse that I, I thought was worth throwing in uh, that might get you a little better exact if Hawkbill wins is Pumpkin Rumble, the five. So I'm going to do exactas with eight three eight four eight five. But uh, I am going to single Hawkbill in the um, in the pick four because I'm going to spread out in uh, in another spot. The uh, 12th race is the Grade One Woodbine Mile. This is a really uh, intriguing betting race. I think I ended up on Lancaster Bomber for Aiden O'Brien. I always like O'Brien's horses on the big days. This one was second in a group one in June. And looking at his form, you know, he ran well the Breeders' Cup, which was firm turf. And in Europe, it looks like the his better races were when it wasn't, there wasn't as much of, uh, the turf wasn't as soft. So I'm thinking maybe that this one just prefers firmer turf. Looks like it should be uh, firm up at Woodbine. So I'm going to take Lancaster Bomber, the 10, uh, world approval uh, certainly comes off a huge performance. Uh, Dutch connection, I think you got to look at as well. Conquest Panther, I thought was impressive in a prep for this up at Woodbine, so I'll throw that one in. And Dovi, the other one from the Aiden O'Brien barn, who uh, uh, has run some nice races in North America. But Lancaster Bomber is going to be my uh, win pick and my key horse for Exactas, uh, and I'll spread uh, a little bit in the uh, in the pick four here in a minute. Who do you like in the Woodbine Mile? When I looked at the race the first time, I, I like Lancaster Bomber, and I, I looked at his race at Breeders' Cup, and, and then I, you make a good point that he's caught soft turf in, in his last, either soft or good turf in the last four races. They've all been grade one efforts in Europe, and he's uh, he's run okay, and he ran really well in the St. James Palace. He's only won one race lifetime, though, so I just couldn't go for him on the win end. Uh, I think he's a good bet underneath. Uh, I, I think he's He's always there, and Aiden O'Brien gets him ready, obviously. And uh, I, I just don't – I can't take a horse in this classy a race with only one lifetime win. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go away from him, then. I'm going to use world approval as my number one pick. I think the race, the four-star David at Saratoga, uh, albeit over a yielding racetrack with some uh, fairly slow fractions, but was a 108 buyer, and he's, he's run three straight triple-digit buyers. He did that again last year, so he's in the best form of his life, and I, I think this – um, the mile distance suits him fine, and I, I think World Approval is going to run big in here for uh, Mark Cassie and Johnny Velasquez. Uh, Doville is, is a horse that you have to use based on the uh, Arlington Million form. Only got beat by three quarters, but Beach Patrol. Uh, I like. I'm like you. I like Conquest Panthera, the horse that uh, the horse for course here uh, ran really well last time out at Woodbine. It's two for two over this course and a seven furlong stretching out to a mile is a perfect uh, setup. And another horse that I'm going to throw in there that's also good at Woodbine, six for ten lifetime, is a horse that ran third in that race behind Conquest Panther, Glenville Gardens, a 12, 20 to one morning line. 
Uh, Sidatard is a is a nice trainer, knows Woodbine well. This horse had a, had two great works, September second, and September ninth, and I think he could be sitting on a big one at at a huge price. So that's going to be my four horses that I use. Uh, I'm also going to use your horse uh, underneath, but I'm not going to put Lancaster Bob Bomber on top simply because of that one for twelve lifetime record. But he's he's certainly got a shot, and uh, I, I got no argument with the uh, catching the firm turf. But uh, world approval is my key on top with those other horses that we mentioned. And I'm going to put Lancaster Bomber in the in there, second and third. Let's go back to the ninth race, and we'll do pick four tickets. And it's a maiden claiming race at seven furlongs on the poly, and I couldn't uh, settle on anybody. <laughs> so i just taken them all. It's ten horses. I'm going to single hawk bill. I'm going to use four horses in the 11th, Moonlight Malice, uh, Big Bazinga, who – um, either that one or the six Lions Bay. One of those two would be my win pick. Lions Bay is taking a class drop and seven Macho Brew. So three, four, six, seven in the eleventh race, and then in the Woodbine Mile, I'm going to take Lancaster Bomber, World Approval, and Dutch Connection. So I'm going to use three. So it's ten by one by four by three uh, for me, which I think is uh, sixty bucks for fifty cents. How about you? Can't believe you didn't want to handicap that maiden claiming race. It's my specialty. <laughs> I... we'll, we'll, we'll fire away then. <laughs> No, I'm going to fire away. I'm not going to take them all. I'm going to, I narrowed it down. I, I, I threw out some horses on the outside that I just don't think fit, like the number 10 horse. And um, I got down to three horses here some way, and I'm probably going to be wrong starting off to pick four, but I didn't want to go any deeper than that because I don't have a single later on. So uh, mathematics um, ensure that I had to go a little bit thinner than you do here. I'm going to take one of my theories on a maiden claiming race is a horse has been working decent and a um, – uh, a decent rider. I'm going to use them first time out. So I'm going to use seven coming out. The one horse at eight to one, first time starter. Conquest Swagman. The two looks like the logical favorite off um, some good efforts in dropping way down in class from an optional claiming forty to sixteen. And Rare Appeal. The three, even though uh, he's over twelve lifetime, uh, has run some competitive races and dropping to the lifetime low. So I'm going to do the one, two, three, hoping the inside is good at Woodbine on Saturday. So on the uh, in the tenth race, Northern Dancer, I am going to use three horses that I talked about: Noble Thought, the three; Messy, the four; and Hawkville, the eight. Then in the eleventh race is a uh, is a claimer. Uh, I I use four horses in here: um, uh, Big Bazinga, the four, six Lions Bay, Bay, nine Pugsley, and ten Bears Way. So I, that one's the wide open one for me. I'm not sure that I've got that covered well enough. And then the Woodbine Mile, I'm going to use horses that I spoke of. World Approval, the one. Doville, the six. Conquest, Panthera, the seven. And Glenville Gardens, the 12. So that's my pick four. I also, uh, I like the eighth race a little bit, the Canadian a grade two, which kicks off the 20-cent pick five with a $200,000 guarantee. So the pick four ticket that I would play, I would go back to that eighth race and just start a pick five and single a horse called Kidura for a grand motion who uh, – just got beat ahead of the Diana to Lady Eli. and She's even money there, but if you looked at pick five payoffs versus pick four payoffs, uh, it's amazing how much difference one race makes. So I would go ahead and invest the same money in single Kadura there and, and try to get a pick five instead of a pick four. Best of luck with your wagers up at uh, Woodbine on Saturday. And then also uh, remember that Churchill has started their September meet, and they've got a couple of stakes for two-year-olds on their Saturday car that – Worth taking a look at some good uh, betting opportunities, I think, there with nice, uh, nice big fields in those two races. Yeah, there's a little filly in the um, Pocahontas that I won a little bit of money on at Ellis Park about a month ago when I qualified for Vegas. Oh, uh, Kelly's humor Kelly for Brad Cox and Kelly's humor, and she yeah. ought to love that stretch out to mile 16. She closed like a house of fire. Uh, I was screaming at the top of my lungs for her to get there <laughs> in seven furlongs, and she she just blew them away. So she ought to like the mile 16. She's facing some nice. Phillies in there, a couple of shipped down for Saratoga, but I think that uh, she's got a shot in there. I really do. Uh, I think I took the Cassie Philly Snowfire in there, but she was my second pick. Um, I'm yeah. looking for Cass. Cassie had a so-so Saratoga meet. I'm looking for his barn to bounce back strong at this Churchill meet. So. He got better at the end of the Saratoga meet. He was cold as could be the first yeah. couple weeks. So you keep an eye uh, on those horses. Wanted, yeah, one thing I wanted to mention, Tom, uh, some people that kind of miss this if you don't play Woodbine every day. They have a super high five carryover in their 13th race, which is a race after the Woodbine Mile. Ah. And it's a uh, mandatory payout. And uh, it's a 20 cent bet. You can pay a lot of combinations. And they've got a $1.4 million carryover. Whoa. So they're going to put three, $3.5, $4 million into that race. 
and it's a tough race. It's uh, it's the 13th at right after the Rico Woodbine Mile. So uh, yeah, best of luck up there. But you can you know play a lot of combinations because somebody's a claiming race for twenty thousand dollars with a full field. So uh, six and a half furlongs on the turf. So it's a nice race to try to take a shot. Best of luck with your Saturday wagers for Jim Goodman. I'm Tom Leach. This is the End of the Money Podcast for KeelanSelect.com.